Redditors who have had neighbors from heck. What happened? This isn't even everything that went down with that neighbor. Just some, not so, brief highlights. My mom had this neighbor who pretended to be weak from cancer chemo so her landlord couldn't get mad at her for when trash bins were full and lawn was filthy. She even went as far as shaving her head and faking a limp, cane and everything. Mum baked her some cookies and offered to take care of her bins and lawn. Neighbor spills about her scam. But my mom, now enlightened about my neighbor's the fault in our star's balls and tired of the trash blowing into our yard, called the landlord. Neighbor wasn't happy and would blast music at ungodly hours of the night we morning to get back at my mom. Mum would get frustrated because she worked late and left early. Filed noise complaints to police. Police arrive. Neighbor claims my mom, old little Asian lady, punched her in the chest. A neighbor wants her arrested. Mom shows cops our security cam footage. No mom punching. Instead finds crazy neighbor kicking her 9 year old daughter out in the middle of the night. The 9 year is banging on her door. My mom comes out to check on noise. Tries to bring hysterical girl inside. It's like 2 a.m. Neighbor comes out and sprays her with the hose. Neighbor taken away. Daughter sent to live with dad. When you don't have cancer, but you are cancer. They tried to kill my dog because it was a death dog. She was a white lab and very sweet. We had a large fenced in backyard. My dog wasn't terribly loud. She wasn't aggressive at all. She was just the size of a lab and my neighbors, specifically the wife, thought that made her evil. They called the cops more than once saying my dog was terrorizing the neighborhood. The cops came, met the dog, and we explained that she was always in her yard. They left saying just make sure she stays in the yard. Well neighbor called two more times to complain and eventually they went and spoke with her about her ludicrous complaints. Here is when she started taking matters into her own hands. We noticed our dog was getting sick a lot. Like really sick. We took her to the vet and the vet said we needed to stop feeding her human food that could be bad for dogs. We had no clue what she was talking about. We went back home and decided to keep a closer eye on her. Turns out our neighbor had been dumping all manner of vile things over our fence. Food scraps, mop water, and god knows what else. We went and spoke with her about this and she denied it. Finally we caught the bee on video and made sure she saw us recording her. Later that night the husband comes over and apologizes for his wife and begs us not to call the cops. He promises he'll ensure our dog is left alone. We agreed but said if anything happened to our dog again, we would press charges. Thankfully she stopped coming after our dog. She moved on to our landscaping. She climbed over the fence more than once to trim, read hack and destroy, our hedges and a few saplings. She even went and pulled all the flowers out of our flower bed that we had just planted. We went and spoke with her husband as he was the more sane of the two. Same conversation as with our dog. There were more random things that we could never prove. Eventually she fell very ill and passed. Her husband was like a different person. Invited us over for barbecues and all. Eventually even got himself a little dog. The woman who had my old apartment before me used to feed all the neighborhood skunks causing them to constantly hang around my dimly lit apartment building. My then boyfriend used to have to carry a flashlight to avoid startling one and getting a face full of stink. My neighbors in the crappy apartment I moved to after I moved out of my parents place were hoarders to the extreme, as well as alcoholics. We started getting roaches in our apartment about 2 months after they moved in. Then came mice. Then came rats. About once a month we'd call 9, 1, 1, on them because we'd find one of them passed out in the parking lot, or on the doorstep, or on the stairs. They came over and asked if it was us who kept calling 911. Then they cussed us out because they didn't have insurance and had to take out numerous payday loans to cover the ambulance costs. We broke our lease and moved out after someone took a crap on our welcome mat. In an apartment, this lady lived on the third floor. She must have let her cat pee everywhere bc the entire building reeked like cat pee. The smell entered my apartment frequently. When I passed her in the hallway I would have to hold my breath bc she smelled so bad. I dealt with this for 2 years with multiple complaints to the office until I eventually called animal control. Turns out she had 30 cats in her apartment. I live on a farm and we had one guy who was a real prick. He was known to have definitely stolen sheep from us. 
In some cases he had shorn the wool off them, sold it and returned the sheep and sometimes eating the sheep we suspect. He demanded that we front the bill to fix the fence despite it being between our two properties and refusing to split the costs. He also had someone else's bull jump into his property, used it to service his cattle for two years and when the owner tracked it down the bastard demanded to be paid the adjustment costs or he wouldn't return it. He had a house on the property that he rented to his farmhand and the farmhand found him in there one day going through his things and telling him he wasn't allowed to leave the property under any circumstances while under his employ. The guy quit straight after that and wanted to work for us. My neighbor has three dogs which they let outside twice a day to poop. The dogs are friendly and not very loud, except they always crap on our lawn. My husband and I have actually seen our neighbors encourage their dogs to use our lawn. They physically led the dogs to our lawn or discourage them from going on their lawn, etc. I finally had enough so I got my garden trowel and flicked all their dogs crap onto their lawn. Today my husband went outside to mow the lawn and caught the neighbor encouraging their dogs to go onto our lawn. The neighbor acted like nothing was wrong, but quickly called the dogs back. My first apartment living away from home was in a small complex filled with retirees. My neighbor across the hallway was a man my ex and I nicknamed Mr. Fire. He'd glare at me all the time and complain whenever I was sitting outside. He hated my cat and always assumed I was a smoker. Young people and their cigarettes. You better not smoke around here. The lady down the hall from you is on oxygen and she can smell it. How he got his nickname. Once I was walking to the bus stop before class and X and I saw a garbage can smoldering in front of our building. It wasn't flaming. But there was a hole burned through it and the plastic around the hole was melting. It had been a dry spring. So we were worried it might start an actual fire. X ran inside to get the apartment manager. Who lived one floor under me. When she came outside with the maintenance guy. Who removed the can. She yelled at the neighbor's window. Hey you. What's the deal here? Apparently, this old man with beginning stages of dementia was cooking a steak in his kitchen. When the meat lit on fire, he didn't know what to do, so he threw the entire pan in the garbage. But then the can started melting, so he thought it'd be a good idea to throw the whole thing out the window onto a garden full of wood chips. He was eventually taken away to a retirement home after flushing his diapers down the toilet, bursting a pipe, and flooding the laundry room. When I was a kid our neighbor built this giant deck on his house that actually went over our fence. We ended up having to go to the city to force him to make it smaller. We went to a family reunion shortly after, and when we came back he had a sign on his fence facing our front door that said peekaboo I see you sparados and he had set up a bunch of security cameras on his house that all were all aimed at our house. We pretty much just avoided him from then on until my parents divorced and sold that house. It's been over two years, and he hasn't waved back once. That awkward moment when you wave at your blind neighbor for two years. Guy next door was a hoarder, junk on front and back porch, door that won't open, and never cut his grass. After a couple years of city not enforcing lawn care, neighbors on either side started cutting front lawn for him, but we couldn't mow back for him because he always had two large dogs who only understood Polish. Grass was always 6 feet tall in backyard and that plus trash meant the mosquitoes along the fence were horrendous, rendering our otherwise pleasant shade garden unusable after any rain. At one point he was stealing our water which drove up our water bill. We suspect he didn't have electric either. He hung out at the library all day most days. Near the end he slept in his truck in his driveway sometimes, possibly to avoid going in his hoarding ruined house. Eventually he died. He was very sick. His house is in probate. Now someone mows every month or so. His son came and tried to clean out the house. But after dozens of truckloads to the dump when the beer cans and fast food bags were still hip deep I think he finally admitted defeat and quit coming out to clean every weekend. It will take a professional crew to clean it I think. Thank goodness we are renters, not owners. I had a neighbor who would bring women back every weekend. Usually it was cool. I'd hear the bed squeak for 20 seconds. Stop. Silence. Then laughing. I'm not a jealous type in any way. But when he constantly played crappy German house music at 4 in the morning, I started getting peed. After talking to him about it, he essentially told me to frick off. So the next time it happened, I yout a baby's crying and put it on full blast through my speaker, which I had sat up against the wall. Needless to say, it stopped after that.
This is a bad neighbor story that was fixed by a good neighbor. My grandma who passed away recently lived in not the best part of town. She worked at my dad's laundromat there, refused to leave and loved working there for 30 plus years. 10 years ago some new neighbors came in and decided to pick on my grandma. The entire family, young to old, they would steal carts, throw crap at her, steal money when she wasn't looking, etc. I had no idea what was going on and my grandma was too prideful to tell anyone. However, one day another neighbor that's been washing his clothes there for 20 plus years saw this. I am pretty sure he is a drug dealer but I don't judge. I played baseball with his kids. He legit told my grandma to wait inside, pick the littlest one up, hung him on a fence post and exchanged words with the father before picking him up by his neck. The entire street watched. They moved out the next day after he smashed all their car windows. Till this day not a soul has bothered my grandma. I didn't hear this story until her funeral last week. It's amazing how terrible and great people can be. We had one house on my old street growing up, which had just changed owners. Seemingly nice couple and their kids move in and they are okay at first. Kids were kinda annoying, but they were like 6 and 9 so the rest of us on the block ignored it. We were all between the ages of 13 to 16. The kids began screaming profanities at us and throwing stuff. We just started avoiding them because they were nuts. So they told their mom that we were being mean. We then learned that she was freaking crazy and would ride her bike up and down the street telling parents what their children had done wrong to their boys. Mostly lies, but some truth. None of the parents would take her serious and she was told to frick off many times. We had an empty lot on the street where we would dig tunnels and build paintball fields. Every single morning we would find everything destroyed on the field. We find suspicious attempts at traps made and all kinds of crap. Boards with nails laid behind my neighbor's tires and crap. I'm certain the mom was sending her kids out on missions to get back at us and the parents. The unprovable damage went on for about a year. Peace returned when she moved and then we all grew up. I live next door to a psychotic M cook in the backwoods south that's a genius at evading cops. He does exciting things like ride an ATV up and down the street, shooting randomly in the air, shoot up with his buddies 10 feet from my son's bedroom window, wreck into my house, builds booby trapped M labs in the woods, beats his girlfriend, his friends show up and pass out in my driveway, random drugs show up in my mailbox all the time, can't leave my house because he'll rob it. God he's so much fun. I live in an apartment. I pay my rent on time. I don't break a lot of crap. Sometimes I'll laugh a little loud with my sister or friends. But overall I'm a good neighbor. This guy and his GF move in. She gets pregnant. They decide to get a dog. She decides that she doesn't want to walk or play with the dog so she puts him out on the balcony all day. The dog barks all freaking day. This went on for about 2 months. The city I live in has a noise ordinance but the cops really don't enforce it much. Property managers said we've talked to him and the dog isn't out much during the day. I was at my wits end I finally contacted the property owner. Told him I had been here for several years with no incident and that the neighbors had a dog they kept on the balcony so the smell of dog crap and pee was horrible and I couldn't sit out on my balcony in peace. He got in contact with my property manager and told them to either evict them or move them away from me. Before they moved out, he got drunk and smacked her around. I called the cops on him. They took him in but she refused to press charges. Not sure what happened to them after they got moved to another apartment. When I was a kid we lived across the street from crappy parents with even crappier teenage children. The sister brought random dudes home at least 2-3 times a week, and was so loud that my parents called the cops on her once because they thought she was being attacked. Nope, she was just really loud when she was freaking. Her brother had a lucrative business selling coke, and he always had customers hanging out in the driveway waiting for him to show up with some more blow. His dumbass parents kept bragging about how well he was doing with his construction job because he bought them a new car and a boat. The sister babysat me once, but left after an hour because she had to go frick somebody. Her brother showed up to take over and I made him help organize all of my stuffed animals. I don't remember if he was high, but he organized the crap out of all of my toys. We left that neighborhood as soon as the drive-bys got more frequent. I used to be good friends with a girl next door from when we were 10 till HS started, even though she treated me like crap. 
Her parents were obviously alcoholics so I felt sorry for her more than anything. My little brother came along with me over to her backyard one day and he accidentally tripped and fell into their back porch door. Her mom, who had daily naps from all of her drinking, was woken up and stormed outside to scream at my little autistic brother that could barely speak. When he didn't respond, duh, she burned him with a cigarette on his arm. Not as crazy as some of these other stories, but she still knowingly burnt a 6 year old autistic kid. My parents next door neighbor, a lady, they don't have a big backyard, but she had two dogs, a boxer and a rottweiler. She rarely ever walks them so they are usually pent up with energy and are not well socialized. Whenever people or dogs walked by outside, they would go nuts and jump tackle our mutual property wooden fence separating us. Every year, the fence needs to be replaced because of the dogs. Not only does she never be willing to pay for the replacement, she is never willing to even split the cost. My parents would end up footing the entire bill for a new fence each year with my dad not wanting to make a big deal. She also has this very tall tree in her backyard that we tried to get her to trim and maintain in case strong winds would bring the cross branches down damaging the surrounding houses and people walking by. But she would ignore us. Eventually one very windy day, a branch snapped from that tree and it crushed and killed the boxer. Ever since then, the problems with the fence destruction and aggression stopped even with the rottweiler still around. So I guess it was the boxer that was causing all of the problems. But to this day, she still seems like a bee of a neighbor and a very subpar dog owner. This is a story about how local government can actually work for you. I live across the street from some major crapheads. For some reason where my house ends is also the end of the residential zone. Directly across is zoned for business. The butthole who owns that business actually advertising on his website that he's a baron and his wife is a baroness. I like to call him Baron Von Frickstick. Well, Frickstick leased some of his property to some fat asses who sell crappy low carb food. They'd been there for a couple of years when suddenly this massive food storage unit that looked like a train car appeared on their lot. And it was loud. Very loud. And it ran 24 stroke 7. During the day with all the other noises it wasn't so bad. But at night, it was the worst. Just about every 20 minutes this contraption would start up. I first went directly to Frickstick and complained. He directed me to the fat butthole who owns the low carb place. This guy couldn't give two fricks. I called the city. An inspector came out and did some testing. His results was that it wasn't actually loud enough for them to get into trouble. He did say he would check on their permits though. Nothing ever came about that. So, a long time goes by. Every night I seethe with anger and try to figure out ways to blow up this contraption or their place of business without being caught. I couldn't actually come up with anything. Then, they have the audacity to start marking parking places on the street and putting up signs that said they would tow. Not just during business hours, but all the time, whether they were there or not. I knew that this was illegal as the signs had no penal codes on them, etc. I asked around to people I knew, including cops, and was told I should contact my local city council member. I had never done this before. Supposedly politicians are there for their constituents, but I didn't actually believe it. I called. They were friendly. I explained the situation and for good measure I also mentioned the cold storage unit. They looked into it. Suddenly the tow signs were gone. They then let me know that there was going to be a hearing about the cold storage unit. Baron Von Frickstick had already been fined, and hadn't paid those fines. And if he didn't remove the dang thing a lien was to be placed on his property. I was ecstatic. Could the end be near? And then one day a large towing type vehicle came and yanked that piece of crap storage unit out of there. I now have peace and quiet again. I might have the best city council member in the United States. He's getting my vote for every election in the future. You have been visited by the magical duck you don't have to do anything he will simply give you a good day today. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.